So it's Q&A time and I got a lot of questions from you all which I appreciate so much. Um, if you're not familiar with the Q&As, I will put out a request either on my Instagram story and my YouTube community page. Instagram, make sure you're following my account, the closet by Connor underscore, and you'll see the little request I put on my stories every now and then. And if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, which you bloody well should be, you'll see the request put out on my community post. Um, so make sure you're following me on both those platforms so you can ask me questions when the time becomes available. And um, let's get into all of them because there's some juicy ones, okay? Well, not really, but you know. I'll make them juicy. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. But firstly, if you are new to my channel, my name's Connor and I like to talk about all things luxury. If that's something you're into, I'd love it if you could hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're notified when I bring out new videos. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. Now, the first question comes from a fellow YouTuber, Gwenny. Her channel is Styled by Gwenny. Styled by Gwenny, which I'll have a link down below. She's fabulous. Um, she's asked, firstly, I want to know, cereal of choice. Gwenny, I am not a cereal kind of person. I'm not a massive breakfast person. Back in the, the childhood days, I would, I like cornflakes, but I like them with no milk. In fact, I like all the cereals with no milk. I don't know why, I just like them dry. Um, <laughs> I like them just dry old crusty bits of whatever they are. Um, but yeah, I like um, cornflakes. I also like Fruit Loops. Um, and I also like, what's the other one, Nutri-Grain, but with no milk. I just like them dry and I'll just pick it out of the bowl as well. I don't use a spoon, I'll just pick it out like an absolute animal. Um, and then the second part of her question is also, how the hell do you eat Vegemite? You eat it bloody well. So, Dale, I know in her vlog she's done Vegemites, Vegemite, Vegemite. <laughs> This is not starting off well, I can't even talk. Vegemite tutorials of how to perfect the perfect Vegemite on toast. This is my way. I like to put the toast, like the bread in the toaster, toast it. Now you've got to have the butter ready because when you put the butter on, it's got to just kind of glide onto the bread and it's got to melt in. So you put your toast in, you basically take the lid off the butter, put the knife in and have it like ready. So as soon as it comes out of the toaster, you put it on the plate and then you butter it. It's always like a three to one ratio. So three times butter to the ratio of Vegemite. You put your butter on, it's melting in, then you get a little bit of Vegemite and you put it generously in like, generously applied, but not clumpy to the bread. And then it's, oh, it's the best. Vegemite is the best. So us Aussies know how to do the perfect Vegemite on toast, but it takes some getting used to. But Gwenny, you have Marmite in, um, the UK so you know what it's about it's the same sort of thing and the next question is from Gwenny's husband the lion and he's asked on behalf of Gwenny if I had to go on the run which country would I head for and which one bag would you take oh I'd, I'd probably go to France and I'd hide out and recluse in Paris and I would take probably the MTO I mean if you're on the run and you get caught you want to be caught holding your favorite bag Kind of like when Martha Stewart went to um, went to court and she took a Birkin for tax evasion. <laughs> I wanted to have that kind of impact, so I think that would be the best kind of um, best kind of way to go out in Paris with my made to order Fendi baguettes, uh, Fendi um, peekaboo. Next question comes from Eileen. She's asked, "Do you sock sock shoe shoe, or do you sock shoe sock shoe?" Um, like when putting on shoes, what do I do? I do sock, sock, shoe, shoe. And I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realize that was something to think about, but now it's got me questioning my whole life. Yeah, I put on my both socks first and then the shoes. I thought that's what everyone did, but apparently this might be something that would divide the internet. Let me know in the comments what you do, because it's actually um one of those things I've never thought about. Dale's addiction, of course, clinging to the stories with her little questions. If you liked watches, what luxury timepieces would you choose? I, I mean, I love the idea of watches, but I'm just not a watch person. But I do, I do have um, on my phone screenshots of watches that I do like, so I'll pop them up here. I don't know the names, I'm not all into the names and everything, but I love this um, Rolex P 
perpetual something, oyster something something, I don't know, it's blue and silver. Apparently it's like the basic bitch Rolex that anyone can get, um, but you know, I'm not a massive watch person, but I like this one. And there's also one from Cartier that I love as well. It's like square head. I can't remember, but I'll put the photos up. They're the ones I do love. Um, maybe one day I would get a watch and would have to learn how to tell the time. <laughs> I'm kidding. I can tell the time, but, um, yeah, I'm just not a watch person, but if I was, these are the ones I would buy because you know, they're sexy. Next question comes from Sally of Davily. She's asked, what do you think of Chanel versus what goes around comes around? I, so what goes around comes around is this big consignment store that's in New York and Cassie Thorpe has worked with them. Um, they do a lot of like vintage Chanel pieces. They've got heaps of different stuff and they've got a lot of, I guess, highly sought after pieces that are in really good condition as well that I've noticed from their website. Um, I think Chanel, I, I don't know the details. I haven't really looked into it that much, but I think Chanel was suing them for selling Chanel items which I don't really know how that works or is it to do with that? Or is it to do with the date codes? I don't know. There was some, some hoo-ha. I'll find a link of the story and I'll pop it, pop it down below. Look, I don't really care too much. Uh, you know, Chanel suing someone like what else is new? So I don't really have skin in the game, but it's an interesting read. I just can't remember the details. So <laughs> not really selling it for you. It's an interesting read, but I don't know anything about it, but I'll put the story down below. So if you are interested, you can read it. The next question comes from Miss Alison Parker. She has asked, are luxury brands more expensive in Australia? I'm going to Australia for Christmas and I always like to buy a gift whilst on holidays, but looking at the sites in brackets, Fendi Celine in Australian dollars, they look more expensive. Thank you. Yeah, Alison, you'd be correct. They are a lot more expensive. We pay a high premium for luxury goods. Now, when you're obviously a tourist shopping here, we do have a tax refund scheme. Our tax is the same in all the states. It's just a federal sales tax called GST or goods and services tax, which is 10%. So if you are purchasing a luxury bag here, you would get the 10% back. So if it's a $5,000 bag, that's $500 off when you would leave. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I haven't really looked at US dollars and comparing it to Australian dollars, but I know it would be more even with the tax back, you might break even. Um, so I don't think we're a shopping destination company, a um, country where you're like, wow, I'm going to go there and save this money. It does not work like that sister. So I'd have a backup plan. Obviously if you see something here, you love and whatnot, buy it, but it's not, you're not going to be having some savings. Let me tell you. So maybe like reevaluate, <laughs> reevaluate. But I guess the saving grace might be because the U S dollar is stronger than the Australian dollar. You'd be getting more value for your money. Um, and then with the tax, you might kind of be okay, but it would just depend on all of those factors in the time. Holly at Grace Skerritt has asked, <laughs> There's a gun to your head. You have to spend $500 in Michael Kors or you are dead. What are you buying? Guys, do not wear black to my funeral because I do not want to see that there. I want color at my funeral because I would rather get shot than I wouldn't even know what to buy at Michael Kors. We don't even have a store here. Like, absolutely not. That is just, that is a character assassination. Um, Joanne and Chu has asked, would you ever get the Andiamo bag? Um, so this is obviously about the Bottega Veneta Andiamo bag, which is, um, it's become a bit of an it bag, but it's number one, it's incredibly expensive. There's a lot of leather work in there. I guess it's a heavier bag. They come in different sizes and it's basically the Intrachato classic Bottega weaving. And then it has like this little, I'll put a photo up so you know what I'm talking about, but this little, like, it looks like a bow to me, but I think it's like a rope loop or something. Um, little detail on the front. It's very quiet luxury and it's very like minimalist but I mean I don't think about it because it's just very plain Jane and it's expensive and I think there's a lot of other nicer pieces out there that are a lot less expensive um so I would never get that bag it is not my cup of tea Alrighty, moving on to the YouTube community page questions. First one is from Nufi Loves Luxury. She's asked, if you could choose any luxury luggage, big or small, and money is not a problem, what would you choose and why? Uh, it would dabble in the Louis Vuitton. I think they are classic luggage pieces. Obviously they have the trunks and the hat boxes and the suitcases. Dale, you know, got her Horizon recently as well, which is very cool. Um, I just think that they're so 
like when I, when you think of luxury luggage, they're so synonymous with that. Um, and I think I'd do the the trunks. You'd get all the trunks, and um, obviously, um, if money was no problem, you'd be able to pay for the excess baggage with all the aeroplane, you know putting the, the extra weight from them because they'd weigh an absolute ton. I'm not sure how practical they would be as actual luggage, but who cares if money's no problem, you'll just replace it if it turns to shit. So definitely EOLV. Next question is from Elizabeth Kripau, Kripau, Kripau 6784. She's asked, are all your sneakers all luxury ones? Um, no, not all of them. I have like Nike sneakers that I have, like Air Force Ones. I have Lacoste sneakers. Um, yeah, so they're not all luxury ones, but, you know, I wear more. I wear the luxury ones more. In saying that, the Lacoste ones I don't think are as comfortable as the luxury ones. The Nike ones are comfortable, but they're probably on par, especially with like my Golden Goose sneakers, they're probably on par. So, you know, I hope that answers your question for you. But no, I do dabble in, you know, the streetwear shoes. Um, and when they get dirty, it's a little less disheartening, but I still clean all, this, my, all my shoes. Next question is from Ada Solly Styling. She has asked, what are your favorite three bags in your collection? Explain why they are your favorites. Hmm, good question. Probably, you know, my MTO Peekaboo. I mean, just look at it. Do I even have to explain? It is up there because it is just so, like, it's so me, it's, a special little bag so it's got my heart and soul into it no one else has it it's got the python on the handle and it's just love everything about this bag i look at it even when it's just sitting in here and i just think you are one sexy bag the other bag would be my soft trunk baguette from fendi i cannot wait to get another one of these waiting for something special to come out um but this is really a great bag it does have a adjustable crossbody strap that you know you can hook on the sides or you can carry it handheld i like carrying it handheld i think it's a really good size um great capacity just a very easy carefree bag that fits a lot um i think that whilst it's probably more masculine in design just because it's quite structured or it's quite like straight lines um i feel like anyone can take this bag i like just holding it like this carrying it like this putting the, the strap on it's very versatile and it's just one of those bags when you walk in you see your bags and you're like yeah cool i'm taking this one and every time i take it i just love it um so glad i got it in the black with the silver hardware i just think it's very fresh and um you know i just love black and silver Anyways, I think it's a great combo. Like I said, waiting for another version of this bag to come out, like something that's very striking or something that's very different. But yeah, it's such a great bag. Great price point as well. I think it's very um, realistic for the versatility and the quality of the bag. I think when I bought it, it was like 2,900. It's gone up a little bit, but it's like 3,080 or 3,090 or something like that. It's a great price and love it. And last would be my Dior mini saddle pouch. Obviously, I got this bag in Paris, so it has great memories linked to that, but it's just a really great bag, great size. I like that you kind of get the classic Dior saddle um, silhouette without it being an actual saddle bag. You get the classic jacquard oblique pattern without it being the light beige where you're too scared to use it because it's going to get dirty. It's got this chunky kind of um, military style substantial buckle on the front, which gives amazing ASMR when you clip it. Um, and it's a great size for myself, black leather, so it's very, like pebble leather, so it's very carefree. And I just think it's got all these kind of different elements in the one bag, but it all works. Um, yeah, it's just a great bag. Every time I put it on, it just, you get this feeling of just, I love this bag. Like, I don't really know how I'd explain that, but when you put it on, you just feel, this is a luxury bag. Um, yeah, it's small, but it fits all the things in that I would want it to fit in. Like, it's got quite a bit of capacity in there. Put my phone in just so you can kind of get an idea. So phone, card holder, wallet, um, keys, lip balm, like that. The little essential grab and go stuff, but it's a great bag. I get a lot of messages about, is this bag worth it? Does it fit this? Does it fit that? Yeah, it's a great bag. I can't stress it enough. Next question is from Maggie Chu. She also has a YouTube channel, which I will link down below. Fabulous girl. Um, she's asked, if you had to get rid of your entire bag collection and could only rebuy from one luxury house, which would it be? 
Maggie, you are a bag lover. Why would you come out with those, the big guns like that, okay? That is, your words say hurt. No, um, ooh, I don't know. I would, I'd probably say Fendi just because, I mean, two of the bags that I just mentioned before were Fendi, so it kind of goes without saying. I like a lot of their men's bags, especially now, like in the last few years, they've really invested a lot into menswear and creating really timeless bags that are very functional and they I wish they'd be a little bit more creative with some stuff which I think they're heading down that direction um, but I would probably say Fendi probably a few years ago I would have said Louis Vuitton but um, they, there are lots of bags that I do like from Louis Vuitton that come out but none where I'm like oh wow can't wait to get that like I'm just a bit like oh yeah it's nice but I don't know if it's worth six thousand dollars for this canvas bag if that makes sense I think Fendi the price point the quality and the overall design you really get a lot more value for money and it's a lot more satisfying buying a bag like that so I'd probably say Fendi um but you know I don't that's a world I do not want to live in Next question is from Anak4389. She's asked, is there an item you regret not buying when you're in Paris and you still think about? No, there isn't. I think when I was in Paris, I, you know, I'd be doing stuff during the day and then I'd walk past a shop and you'd go in and then you'd go shopping and then you'd go and do other things, go to an art gallery or something and then you'd go back shopping. Not like I didn't plan it like that, but you just got lost at looking thing, looking at things. So I definitely looked at everything and there was nothing where I was like, oh, I wish I could go back to that shop and get that item or, oh, I wish they had it in stock and they didn't. Um, I didn't have any of that. I think because I went by myself, I had the freedom to do that. So you didn't feel like you were, you know, wasting the person you're with's time going back and looking at something. I, yeah, there was nothing that I regret, um, you know, that I didn't get. Um, I think when I was getting my Dior bag, when I went to Dior, my friend Stella, who was with us, she wanted to get a bag from Goyard after. So I wasn't sure if there was something that I would like at Goyard or not. So when we went into Dior, um, they only, like the saddlebag that I ultimately ended up getting, that was the last one. But they were like, oh, we can keep it on hold for a few hours. Um, go have a look at some other stuff. And then if you come back, you can grab it. If not, if you don't come back, then we'll put it back on the shelf. So they were very like friendly and flexible and stuff like that. And it was a, a non-pressure kind of shopping experience. And in Dior in Paris, they were really lovely and they made it a great experience. So um, when I went to Goya, there was nothing really that I was that interested in or I had my heart set so much on the Dior bag. So because I had that kind of experience, I didn't regret anything. Um, and the sales associates I found personally were willing to work with their customers they were oh we can put it on hold for you don't worry like go have a look at something else versus i find like in australia you have to do a lot of the well you're looking at two different things and you're like oh do you mind if you put it on hold and they're kind of like oh yeah we can't like they make it a big deal was over there it was a lot more welcoming um so i yeah to answer your question no <laughs> it was a very long way of saying that but no i didn't and i think um I think when you see something, you should just grab it and not think about it too much and not think, oh, well, I'm going to go to this shop in a few days time. If it's, you know, if it's at that shop, then it's meant to be. No, I think if you see something, you love it in the moment um, and you've, it works for you, you should just purchase it and then not have to worry about trying to find it later down the track. The next question is from Charlie Maron. She's asked, do you have a preference style of bag? If money is not an issue, which bag will you buy and why? I love a crossbody. I love a little messenger kind of crossbody moment. But now I think ever since I've got my peekaboo, I like carrying it just handheld. I think I feel a lot more comfortable carrying bags like that. And even with my soft trunk baguette, like I mentioned before, I like carrying it handheld. Um, but I guess it just depends on what you're like going to be doing that day. If you're just going out for a little lunch moment, then it doesn't matter. But if you're out all day and you need to be hands-free than I love a crossbody. Um, it depends on the bag. Some bags look better on certain people, or better on yourself crossbody, or some of them look better at carrying it handheld. But I think bags that have both options I like. Um, so yeah, I used to not like carrying things top handle, but it's grown on me, I'm growing. <laughs> the next question comes from Jenny in Barbie land and she has asked, are you planning to come to Europe soon? You said your next trip will be to Singapore, but 
But uh, England, Italy, France, again, on the radar. Love your videos. Much love from London. Oh, thanks, Jenny. Um, so, my next trip, I'm going to Singapore in early June. So, two months away now. Um, probably that would be it for the year. I want to try to do a Melbourne trip and then I have to go back to WA for a wedding in October. Going to WA is such an expensive thing. It's probably going to cost me more to go to Western Australia, do the wedding, hotels and all of that stuff, than it will be just to go to Singapore. For more time in Singapore and less time in WA, it will cost more, go figure. Um, so, because I have to do those things, um, not I, that's all I'll be doing travelling for the year. I do desperately want to go back to... Paris in May next year and um, I don't know if I'll do Italy but I'll definitely do London so I'll do like Paris London just not sure if I should like fly to London do that first then go to Paris and then fly home or if I should I don't know I'll do it but um yeah I definitely want to do both those things when I um, when I can next year um, when I went in May I had a really great time. I really liked how quiet it was. I liked that spring and all the flowers were opening and it rained a few times whilst I was there, but it was not like the rain here at buckets now. Like it was just a little light umbrella. That was fine. So yeah, it was quiet. I didn't have to line up to do much. It was just very easy going. Um, so I like that time of year. Obviously summer, if you're a summer person, great, but I don't mind the cold. Um, and I wore a lot of shorts whilst I was over there and everyone was like, it's so cold. And I'm like, it's not, it's 20 degrees. So <laughs> go figure, but it's definitely on the list. Trust me, if I shat money, I'd be going every month. Next question is from Somehow Adulting. They've asked, what's the best part about being on YouTube and what's the worst part? The best part is you get the connection with people. Obviously, when you buy luxury goods and stuff like that, there's probably not a lot of people in your real face-to-face -face life that you would connect with on that. Um, and you might feel a bit uncomfortable connecting with people. Like I wouldn't go into work and be like, I've just bought this sort of thing. Um, so you get that audience, you get that connection. I love when I put up a video and um, I'm talking, you know, I don't know, rating a collection or something and I make it all Connor, Connor like where there's little jokes and stuff in there. And I love when people are like, this, this has made my day. I've had such a terrible morning and I put this video on and it's put me in such a better mood. I think that's a very rewarding feeling to know that you can make other people happy and they might be having the worst week and then they just put on your video and it's turned it around for them. And I think that's probably one of the best parts. I don't think everyone has the ability to do that just on YouTube in general or just videos.